Amen. Amen. Take your Bibles and turn to Acts chapter 2. You may be seated. Kids, you can be dismissed to our kids' time. I think the Holy Spirit just blew through here. Thank you, Terry, for reminding us of that. Yeah, see, there you go. He's reminded us. Psalms 127, verse number 1. It says, Unless the Lord builds the house, the workers, listen to this, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with centuries will do no good. Unless the Lord. Unless the Lord. It's incredible to understand, if you will, for just a few minutes this morning, how God creates things for His purpose. We may think that the church is for our purpose or our good. We may think that He gave us this country just to serve us. We may think that He gave us the Word only for us. That's not the case. You see, the whole world is who's on Jesus' mind. That's what happened at the cross. It's what should happen in our lives each and every day of our lives. God has built the church, not just this church, but every church. But specifically over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about the core values of what's going on here at at, at our church. In fact, you know what is in the middle of this? It's a core. This is an apple. Do you know what I don't like? I don't like apples. That's not bad. got apple juice. I think it's going to take more than one bite. Anybody got a Tootsie Roll? I'd rather do that one than this one. There's a core in there. There's a core in so many other things in our lives. You know, when the core of our system inside of us doesn't work properly, we have problems. Have you ever seen an apple before that had a hole on the outside? It probably had a worm in it. <laughs> well, I don't do Microsoft, so it must be. You're welcome. Our core values, I want you to think for just a little while with me today, in fact over these next few weeks, of the different things that God has given us. Today we're going to talk about the very first of our core values called community. Say community. Community. We're not going to talk about the community fellowship, we're going to talk about the concept or the understanding of what community is. What we need to first know is that God called us, you and me, to Him. 1 Corinthians 1.18, the message of the cross, there's a cross behind me, okay? The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are headed for destruction, but we who are being saved, it is the very power of God. The core of Christianity is Christ. This may not go like I want it to. Without the cross, we're sunk. Have you all ever seen... Boneless chicken. No, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Have you ever seen a chicken without bones? I, I, they're selling you something fake. Because it had bones before. I, I want to remind you today that the church, or the Christian, if you will, that just has him on the outside, that is just showing you what he looks like on the outside, but on the inside there's no core, no bones, we're in trouble! The church of 2024, here's the problem. There are so many of us that say we know, that look like we know, but when all the world starts crumbling, we don't know. 
I want you to understand today that you and I have an opportunity to, to seize life, godliness, and even to be transformed when we seize the core of the truth, who is Christ. This is fun. Oh. Thank you. Um, this is not a good napkin, David. David comes in this morning and he's asking me to help with his phone. His is not an Apple, it's one of them Android. This is an Apple. So this is an Android napkin. <laughs> Julie, you hear them? They're laughing at my jokes. <laughs> Thank you, Mary Kay. Have you used this? Okay. I need to come back, okay? Can you believe I'm eating an apple? Easter's in four weeks. Can you imagine, Christians, if you were the one that went to the cross? No, no, no. To the tomb. The one you followed for three and a half years. He's not there. Somebody shows up. He's risen. Don't you remember? Without the cross and the forgiveness that Michael talked about this morning, you cannot have the freedom of an empty tomb. The Community Fellowship is founded in 2006 to share some people or share with people what, what and who um, this God of ours is. We put up the, the, the Bible verses, please, or the, the scripture. The, there you go. There's 66 books in the Bible, right? How many books in the Bible? I'm glad you happily understand that. How many books are in the New Testament? New Testament, it says. 27. And there's 39 in the Old Testament. How many authors are there? <laughs> A lot. One. God. He inspired men to write down what He said. You and I are missing some of what God is doing because we've forgotten the core basics of what Christianity and following Christ is all about. Y'all with me? I want you to hear today, I don't care where you shop, that place, that place, or that, that place, it doesn't matter. There's food at every one of those places. You may use this Bible, that Bible, or some other Bible, but here's the deal. Use a Bible! And a napkin, too. I need that shield back over that thing. Because the core of everything in those books is Christ. W.A. Criswell said it this way in a sermon series that he preached through about three or four or however long it was. From Genesis to Revelation, there is a scarlet thread of salvation. Genesis is about God. Revelation is about God. And we desperately need some of you got it. Thank you very much. You can take those down. Throughout the Bible, we have Jesus. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13, as our Bible study talked about this morning, we have salvation. And, and let me just read those scriptures to you. It says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it's openly declaring your faith that you're saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will not be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in that respect, and they have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. In verse number 13, would you please read this one with me? It's on the screen. For 
everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You don't get saved by doing good things. You don't get saved by cleaning up your thinking and your acting. You get saved by believing in the one who saved you, who wants to save you. His name is Jesus. Today I want to declare to you the very first of our core values is something called community. God has called this church to do just that, to come together for His purpose, not ours. It was in 2006 that in somebody's backyard that we began this fellowship with 20, 30 people. And then we we met at um, a grocery store, if we remember, over in Bassett. Um, Incredible. The first time we were together was on a Friday night. We didn't meet for several months until we found this building. Um, Lee Hobbish, he's, he's around here somewhere, on... November the 19th of 2006 was our first meeting in this building. But let me just remind you of something. It ain't about the building. 700 Commerce Court, will you please help us finish that building? Because I'm ready for it to be done. Anybody else? Amen. Can somebody write some checks today? Pull out your checkbook. We just need six or seven zeros. No, we don't. We need five zeros and some big numbers on the front of it. Um, Why? Here's the deal. Demonstrate the love of God to our community. This is what God's called us to do. How do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to make sure it's about Him. Demonstrate the love of God to our community. We're not demonstrating your love. You know what? If Jesus has changed your life, you've got His love. Amen? Amen. But it's not our love we're demonstrating. It's His love. It's unconditional love. I want to remind you today the reason why the church is alive, not just the community fellowship, but the big C church is about Him. And when the church or the preacher or whoever it is makes it about us and what we wear or how we do or whatever, listen to this. We've missed the point. That preacher went to meddling, didn't he? I want to remind you today that if they make it about something else, or here's one, I'm really crabby about this one these days. If they don't open the book and give you the book... Walk out the door. You probably ought to get that and put it on YouTube and everywhere on social media because that's <clears throat> going to get us kicked. I'm fine with that because it's all, it's all about him and not about us. Everybody okay? I'm getting worked up over here. Can I confess something to you? I've never eaten an apple before. It won't be my last. A whole apple. A whole apple. Okay. Can somebody give me a cobbler to dip it in? I used to, somebody bring an apple cobbler, I'd dip it on my plate, and I'd put all the apples to the side and just eat the stuff. Look right here. That's what most people do with the church. We don't want the core. We want that good music. We want them services like food and we, we do good that good. Thank you for feeding last night, too. Thank you for cooking for the food, then, yeah. But it ain't about the food. It's not about the clothes. We're going to do a, a Latino fair here in just a, a April the 13th, right? And it's not about the stuff we're going to give out at that. It's about Jesus. Anybody want to buy it? It's really that simple. It's all about Jesus. Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 47. Will you stand with me as we look at and read God's word together? And if you were creeped out that I just ate an apple in front of you, I really don't care. Um, I do care. I love you, but Jesus loves you more. I'll go ahead. Will you please pray for Miss Helen and her family? Um, Miss Helen was taken off of all of the extra stuff Friday night, and she will most likely pass away sometime pretty soon. As of um, 
40 minutes ago. As of 9.09 this morning, she was still okay, but weak. If y'all don't know who Miss Helen is, she usually sits right back there where Nancy is. She's 97 years old, and she is a woman of faith, and you better stay out of her way because she'll run you over serving Jesus. And literally, she would run you over when she was still driving, but that's a different story. <laughs> um, I have a picture on my phone of her riding uh, Harley Davidson through our parking lot with Cassim Adams on the front of it. She loved. If we could just love like Miss, Miss Helen. And bring the preacher banana pudding when he asks for it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Acts chapter 2, verses 37 through 47. You're praying for Patsy and her family, or for Helen and her family. Here it goes. Acts 2, 37. Peter's words pierced their hearts, and they said to him, and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God. Be baptized in the name of of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sin. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, the promise is to you, to your children, and to those who are far away. All who have been called by the name, or by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, Save yourselves from this crooked, perverse generation. And those who believed what Peter was saying were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. Verse 42, And all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, and to sharing all their meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. And a deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all of the believers met together in one place, sharing everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, and all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Lord, we thank you for the day. We thank you for this truth of Scripture. Please teach us what's at the core, what's really at the core. And we believe that is you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Here's the beginning of the church. Acts chapter 2. Jesus had come to earth. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Yes or no? Yes. Do you believe that not only is Jesus the Son of God, but He is God in the flesh? I, I want you to hear this today. Jesus is God, and we need to hear Him, see Him, know Him, and understand Him. And as that's the case, we see here in Acts chapter 2 that a group of people met together, became one, and did what God called them to do. They together were the church. Together they were working and seeing and knowing who God is and what God wants to do. The reason why you're here today is not to hear a wonderful sermon, but you might. The reason why you're here today is not to get Deb's wonderful um, cookies and bananas and all that kind of stuff. And Deb, thank you for what you do back there and coffee and all that kind of stuff. By the way, that, that closes at about 10.20 every Sunday morning so you can focus here and not there. Why has God called us to be community? Let, let me give you a thought of that. Here's us coming up a slide, okay? It says, we seek, you got this one? Do you have this one up there? No. Okay. Can you type it out real quick and tell me when you have it, please? So I want you to hear about and see about what is this that God wants to do. He wants to build His church, and the way He does it is through community. That's what was happening in Acts chapter 2. They spent their time together. What, did the things, what are the things that they did that day? They ate together. What else did they do together? They worshiped together. What else did they do together? They prayed together. They took the Lord's Supper together. They studied the Word of God with the apostles teaching together. Why were they together? It's because God called them as a community together. I want us to understand, when we see the word community called the community fellowship, it's not just about us as a church here at 2674 Virginia Avenue in Collinsville or over there at 700 Commerce Court. It's about all of us doing what God has called us to do on a daily basis. We build community as we come together. 
Here's our understanding of this. Go ahead. We seek to create community. This is our number one core value of the community fellowship. It's the first thing we talked about way back in Bassett in 2006. And it's the same thing that we are to be doing today. We seek to create community where people exalt God, influence others, and encourage one another. Leave it up for a few minutes. Community. Say the word. We we can talk about what community is. Let me just give you some illustrations of what community is. Hey, have a seat. Have a seat. I want to illustrate what community is. In that classroom, at wherever you went to school or go to school, You have community. Do you like everybody in the classroom? Uh, No. Thank you very much. No, we don't. But you have a a core or a um, something that's drawing you together. Maybe it's physics. I wouldn't have passed that class. You know what? There's other groups of people, and some of them are really strange. Last night, um, we were at an Emmaus thing, and there are these couple of people that I love, 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 but they have been Washington Redskins fans since before it was cool to be... It's still not cool to be a Redskin fan, and you're welcome, Bruce. I'm just going to offend you all over the place. No, but seriously, fans of a sport, like the Chiefs fans. And yes, some of you are thinking it right now. Taylor Swift has been to the Super Bowl more than the Dallas Cowboys have. Say it out loud. Okay, shush. shush. Hey, stop... might even be a Swifty. <laughs> Go, Travis. Those people are around a situation, right? One of the greatest in our community right now is called the Winter Warming Center that meets at the Salvation Army. And there are some incredibly sweet, awesome, and strange people. And I'm not talking about the guests, I'm talking about the servants. And I'm grateful for some people who came together. I'm grateful that the city of Martinsville gave us $35,000. I'm grateful that all these other organizations... Why? Because they came together as a community to do something about a need. Are you tracking with me? When we come together around a common cause, we create community. And the church is a community of believers to show the world that the greatest thing in all the world is not sliced bread, but it's Jesus who was sliced up on the cross of Calvary. You can take it down. Today I want to share with you three things that come directly from that sentence. Number one, God has called us to exalt God. The number one thing ought to be God Himself. The number one has to be God Himself. The number one fact of Scripture is not what you like or what you want to hear. It's about God Himself. In fact, somebody said they didn't like worship today. Maybe it was another day. It wasn't this Sunday. They didn't like the songs. Well, here's the deal. The preacher ought to say to you, somebody ought to say to you, well, the worship wasn't geared toward you. It's geared toward Him. The praises of God. In fact, I kind of get just a little bit offended when y'all don't sing. It's easier for these people who lead when you sing. It's easier when I'm preaching and you open up the Word of God and you take some notes because I know you're getting it. Here's the deal. It's time to exalt God, not the preacher, not the worship band, not the building, not whatever it is. Here it is. It's about God. We're here to exalt God. 1 Corinthians 2, 7. No. The wisdom we speak of this mystery of God, His plan was previously hidden even though He made it For our ultimate glory before the world began. It's all about Him. Not our wisdom, His mystery. And He calls us to turn to God. The exalting of God begins with this. Are you lost? Do you need a Savior? Well, the world doesn't understand that terminology. But the world needs to understand you in trouble. And the number one person that can get you out of trouble is not a lawyer. It's not your mama. It's Jesus. So it's time for us to turn to God or to turn away from one thing, ourselves, our sin, and turn to God. Acknowledge who I am, a a human that is in need of who He is. Acknowledge who we are, acknowledge who He is, and come to Him. Matthew 12, 41. The people of Nineveh will stand up against a generation on Judgment Day and condemn it. For they repented of their sins at the preaching of Jonah. Now, someone greater than Jonah is here, but you refuse to repent. When you say no to Jesus... You saying yes to hell. 
hear me. When we say no to his salvation, we say yes to everything else that's not God. Here you go, right here. When we say yes to him, change begins in our lives. Baptism, some of y'all got saved or got saved. Some of y'all got baptized recently. And, and that baptismal pool, that water, has nothing special. In fact, it's PSA's best. And it has nothing special in it except we need to understand that water baptism signifies something has changed in my life and now there is an outward understanding, an outward sign. When you came out of that water, there wasn't anything different about you except you were exalting the one who mattered most and his name was God. He's changing me from the inside out. Do you know what happens when we exalt God? We exalt the fact that he's the forgiver and I'm the one that needs forgiveness. You know what? There's other people around you that need forgiveness. There's other people around you that need to forgive you. And and, and I don't understand this all the time, why we hold on to grudges, because grudges hurt the people that hold on to them rather than the one that needs them. We need to get rid of those things. And the number one way to get rid of it is forgive yourself. Because God, when you ask Him to be your Savior, He forgives you past, present, and future. This is good preaching. I mean, this is good truth and good preaching. Philippians, excuse me, Ephesians 2.13. But now you have been united with Christ. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to Him through the blood of Christ. They, that, that's the cross right there. And at that point, we receive the Holy Spirit. That's why we exalt God. That's why we lift Him up. Ephesians 1.13. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, He identified you as His own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom He promised long time ago. Here's the deal. It's all about him and not about us. It's not about you. Listen. Some of you need to hear that again. Because you're making life all about you. What you're making at work or not making. What what you're getting in that relationship or not getting. I just hurt my toes. It's not about... We need to take care of us, right? One of my number one things with the, the, the people, us, when we live in poverty, is oftentimes that poverty mindset tells us to give it all away. Give it all away. Help somebody else. And then you come to the place where you have nothing left. You got to make sure that you're getting filled up. And the number one way to get filled up is to do it with Jesus. Now, we're going to help you with food boxes. We got some of those up here. Robert and Tammy, Cindy will help you with that. We got some clothes. Would you all like some clothes? We can give you clothes. We can give you lots of clothes. But it's, it's about Jesus. 2 Timothy 2.14, remind everyone about these things and command them in God's presence to stop fighting about their words. Such arguments are useless and they can ruin those who hear them. Here's the deal. Lead by example. Exalt God, not you. Lead by example. Talk more about God than you talk about you. Just get honest for a second. Do any of y'all have an opinion about anything? I do. I, I, I remind you, you put... You put raisins in a cookie and make it look like a chocolate chip cookie and give it to you're in trouble. That's not bad. By the way, Julie didn't give me this apple. Some of y'all will get that later. It may be this Eve that you get that. (laughs) The best comedians get you laughing at them and not at their jokes. Thanks, thanks Billy. All right, let's go on. We lead by example by exalting God, not ourselves. And when it's all about us, we're in trouble. It's God working, it's not me working. Philippians 1, 6, I'm certain of this, that he who began, he who began a good work, he's the one that's going to finish it until the day of Christ Jesus. Point number one, exalt God. Number two, influence others. You are an influence. Did you know that? 
Some of you need to stop it. <laughs> because we're giving people what's not God. Yes, we have opinions. And opinions are not what people need when their lives are crumbling and falling apart. They need Jesus. Now, I need to tell them my story. I'm an eyewitness of what Jesus has done. Anybody else here today? He's still working on me to make me what he wants me to be. And because I exalt God, I am influencing others for Jesus Christ. And you can do the same. I got behind a little lady on driving down this road last, yesterday, yesterday evening, and I saw this sticker on the back of her car, and it said, He is greater than I. And I'm thinking, who is that precious lady with that sticker? Thank you, Liz Harris, for putting that on the back of your car. She was driving just perfectly, just like she should. <laughs> it's influencing. The stickers on the back of our car influence others. The signs that you give people outside your car influence others. This means I love you. That other thing doesn't. You're not telling them you're number one. Y'all tracking? Influencing others, here's the deal. We influence them for what really matters, and what really matters is the name of Jesus Christ. What really matters is leading others to Him, helping others know and experience who He is. Philippians 1.5, For you have been my partners, Paul says to the church at Philippi, you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. That's what we are. We are partners. Why do we create community? Because we are partners, because Jesus is our Savior. Amen? God is good. And all the time, because God is good and we talk about it in our community, we can go out there and tell others about our community. Not just our community, but His community. The community that comes around Christ and don't stop doing it. Don't stop. Don't stop. Why? Because we need to do this. He says it here. Peter says, here's the deal. I want you to make sure that this perverse generation... Did you know that we live in a perverse generation? I, I'm going to ask again. Did you know that we live in a perverse generation? Lee Hobbs, thank you for bringing up that this morning in our conversation back there. Nobody else knows but you and me. I'll give you a kiss later. If only you knew. Because this world is telling us, trust this one, trust that one. Don't raise your hands. I'm going to ask you a question. You got your taxes back yet? Don't answer. There's a bucket on that end and a bucket on that end. And I'm not meddling. Everything that comes in your hand is from the hand of God. And you influence others by how you use your wealth, your words, and your wisdom. Your church needs you to be faithful. I don't think I'm stepping out of line to tell you that we're at a critical point financially. You need to be faithful. Not just so that I get paid and Cindy gets paid, but so the world knows and is influenced because we're exalting God. Y'all okay? Bruce is our financial leader. He can say yay or no to, you know, if you want to ask him about stuff like that. 2 Corinthians 9.13 As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God. Is that what we do? As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God for your generosity to them and to all the believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Jesus Christ. You see where I just came from? Woo! Did you see where that came from? Your life either depicts it's about me or it's about Him. As a result, God and His church are exalted because we choose as a community. These are our seven core values. This is what we're going to be talking about the next four weeks. Community, relevance, acceptance, creativity, authenticity, unity, and expectations. Will you read those with me? Here we go. Community, relevance, acceptance, creativity, authenticity, unity, and expectations. Those seven things are the most incredible, if you ask me, are the most incredible things that we can do to exalt God. The one thing that we miss most here is number seven, the one at the very, very bottom, expectations. I, I want to remind you why. Because you come to church, and what are you expecting? I'm going to get me some coffee today. I'm going to get to hug that woman. Hmm. What are you expecting today? All that's going to happen, right? I expected a lot of things. Brandon, happy birthday. 
I hope you expected to hear that today. And another Brandon, he's not here today. You tell your Brandon. Feliz Campeonos. Okay, I'm working it, okay? Why? Because we as a group together have some family members that we need to... We need to lift them up. Your sister Brenda, going through some very, very, very difficult health times. Together, we lift her up. Why did God bring us together? Do you believe that God loves variety? Yes or no? Do you believe that God has a sense of humor? Yes or no? Can I illustrate that for you? Look to your right and left. (laughs) I'm not looking up at all. I'm not. I'm not looking up. (laughs) The reason why we are a part of a community is so that we can exalt God, influence others, and while we're doing it, point number three today is to encourage one another. You encourage me. Mary Kay, she passed a stone this week. Praise God. But, but when... Okay. Um, she's also had two children, so it shouldn't hurt. But, um, but when you tell us or me what God's doing, I'm incredibly, incredibly grateful that I watched you change from the first day that we sat right in there and had a conversation because you was a little loopy then. And it wasn't from pain. It was because God was working. Nancy, I get your text. Thank you so much. If y'all don't know what crazy looks like, y'all can look at Nancy right. And you know it. You know it. You tell me that. You got, you got to be a little crazy to, to be a part of the community fellowship. Um, that, let me just go on a little bit further. Sammy got to baptize you the other day. Thank you. Terry, you being up here on them drums... God's not finished with you. Thank you. Summer, wake up. We're praying for you. God's not finished with you. Y'all with me? You with me? Got some weird people in the house today. That'd be Derek and Elsie. I love y'all. God's used, this is the community that God, y'all don't know some of the people I've just talked about because they haven't been here in a while, but here's the deal. Look at you. Look at you. Boy, you shouldn't be here. You should be dead, Jalen. God didn't say he was done with you. And I'm glad you're here today. And you're welcome to buy Mexican food next time we're together. Okay? Would you like an apple? To encourage each other. Robbie, how many days? 20 months months sober. Amen. (laughs) Praise God, I ain't what I used to be. Praise God, I'm not yet what I'm going to be. God has called us as a church family to exalt God, to influence others. And then as we do that, we influence or encourage each other for the cause of Christ. Here's the deal. Let's go to my next saying here. Here's the deal. I've said this a hundred times, and I'll say it again. I stole it from somebody else, and we're going to keep talking about it. Whoever shows up most in someone's life wins the battle of influence. Who are you influencing, and what are you influencing them for? Who are you influencing? I have five. Well, really, I have six. Can I real quick? Dawson, no, I have eight. Wow. (laughs) Dawson, Harper, Ruth and Sean, Rebecca and Coleman, Ryan and Julie, my eight. And if my family goes to hell, I am in trouble. I have some incredible people around us at the Community Fellowship. You are, you're my family. I'm going to be gone in a couple of weeks 
because I get to go to the women's Emmaus retreat and help with that. I, I'm like a part of the, the clergy, uh, they call it the pastors. That get to, and I'm so excited to be with Tammy. And some, there's like 62 all together. 61 on the men, 62 on the women, I think. And I'm just so excited. Why? Because together we're growing with Jesus. There's seven of us or so that are going to go on a retreat, or actually um, on a mission trip that Michael talked about. We're going to West Virginia. Hold on. West Virginia. (laughs) And we're going to build a fence at an elementary school. Why? Because we as community... Listen, we as community are called to make a difference in the world because we're to exalt God, influence others, and encourage each other along the way. Two days after I get back from uh, West Virginia, I'm going to head back to Cuba. Some of you have been there with me before. Why? Because we as a church family have come together to influence the world for Christ. And you have allowed me, thank you, to go and influence some others because of the strength that God has given us here. And there's 14 employees and their families down there that I get to go minister to, and I'm going to love on them. And can I tell you something else? Every week at the community fellowship, there are people that walk in those doors. They get a food box or get some clothes. And some of them are some of the most irritating people in all the world. But you know what? They are worth Jesus. That person that gets in front of you at the line at wherever you are. And you get mad because they pulled out in front of you. And you try to tell them they're number one. Let me just... (laughs) They're worth you doing something different because they need to see Jesus in you. How do we encourage others? By being together. On March the 30th, we're going to have a meal over at the new campus, noon. Um, We've talked about it a little bit. We're actually inviting another church. McCabe Memorial is going to be with us, and maybe a couple other churches are going to actually join in. And excited about that, but it's so that we can be together. We're going to hunt Easter eggs. By the way, Easter's not about eggs. Or bunnies. But we're together. And the more we're together... The more we learn together what it's all about and his name is. Acts 1.14, they all met together and they were continually united in prayer along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women and the brothers of Jesus. They were together, together. We meet together. We serve together. Philippians 2, 3 through 5, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. And don't merely look out for your own personal interest, but also the interest of others. Have this attitude in yourself, which was also in... Christ Jesus. Here's the deal. As we enjoy what God has done, John 10.10, our theme verse at the Community Fellowship becomes a reality. And it says, will you read it with me? Here we go. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. How are they going to have life? How are they going to have it abundantly? Because God has called us. Listen, church. God has called us to exalt Him. To influence others. And to encourage each other as we're together. Why does the community fellowship exist? Can you go back to that demonstrate slide, please? Why do we exist? We exist, not that one. There you go. We exist to demonstrate the love of God to our community. What are we demonstrating? Does the core taste different? I got you. I love microphones. The core of the church is Jesus. And until we can see the core, we're not being the church. God has called us to exalt Him, to influence others, 
and then to encourage each other. Let's be the church. Anybody with me? Hot dog. The buckets are up there. Please give. You want to serve? Come and let's talk about it. You want to show others what Jesus looks like? Make sure your words and your actions and everything else lines up with Jesus. Father God, we come before you today. We thank you for what you've taught us, what you're teaching us. I pray, Lord, that we would come to the place as a church, as a group, and see that you really are the core. The reason why you've given us community. The reason why we're together is really all about you. And Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. You want to thank him with me? We thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.